during the training, I was always asking some questions and you would say, why don't you just humble yourself? And I really had to listen to you then because you would say, humble yourself and listen, you know? So I took a whole lot from that. I really thank God I, I listened to you. How are you doing today? Uh, welcome to this session. And in this particular session, I will be interviewing a man that just relocated to Canada. This is interesting for me because a lot of times I've, I've been interviewing women, 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 especially when it comes to Canada. All right, introduce yourself. I'm curious. Okay. Okay, my name is Andrew. Um, sometime um, before December 2021, um, I've actually been getting notifications about Dr. Linda's um, program and I, I just ignored it anyway, but um, somehow I didn't really know. Um, but the persistence just now kind of made me say, okay, let me um, kind of try and contact and then get some more information about what she really does, you know. So eventually I had to now engage her and I got um, a response. So I enrolled and then um, decided to take um, the program because I equally needed to upgrade my credentials. So I had to now um, enroll and then took some training from her. And, you know, they were really quite uh, useful because I then ended up getting admission from four um, schools in Canada here. You know, mm. but um, I had to now opt for one, and it's been a very good story. And um, I decided to contact her and let her know. So that's just been <laughs> a very short story. What were you doing before you relocated? Okay, well, um, I'm a middle management director in um, Nigeria. Oh, nice. So, what made you want to yes. relocate? Ah, well, <laughs> back home in Nigeria, things have really not been so, you know. There's this fear of insecurity and so many things. You know, any forward thinking person would definitely have to. And aside from that, really, I needed to upgrade my, my credentials, you know, because I find out that I wasn't able to really measure up. So I needed to get some more, you know, kind of go back to school. And that's actually what really informed my decision to pursue um, a, a higher program. What are you studying now? Like the name of the program? Is it uh, like, are you doing business management or like. Yeah, exactly. Program? Yes, international wow. business management, yes. That's awesome. Okay, I would like to hear, let me say what I would call the behind-the-scenes story. Was it just like everything was just smooth? It just went, or were there some roadblocks? Even before you met us, have yes. you tried it before? Or it, it, was it meeting us that you decided that you want to relocate? That, have okay. you tried it before? Uh, yeah. I, I, I had taken some steps, but then I, I know if I had not attended your program, I would have really made some terrible mistakes. So it was just the right timing for me. I, I don't know if I would say that's a coincidence or, you know, because at that particular time I started getting information. But after I got to hear about your, your you know, um, training, I knew it's something that I would need that definitely I'll pick one or two things. But I ended up really picking a whole lot from the training and it was quite, it was quite, um, it was quite very helpful then, very instrumental. Yeah. I see. Okay. Um, did you face any obstacle on your journey on this? Or like, Definitely. I made, I made some mistakes, but I'm happy it didn't <laughs> cost me the opportunity anyway. I'm like, I told you I got admission from four schools. I actually really wanted to go to New Brunswick, but I mean, I just a slight mistake made me to lose that um, admission. I was already offered an admission and I needed to make some modifications and I, you know, it was, it just went to someone else. It was I, very, very, it, it really hurt me, but it's okay. At least I'm, I'm here in Ontario, so I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> so sorry about that. So sorry about That's that. What about your, um, what about your visa? Is this the first time you're applying for Canada visa? Although um, I visited Canada in 2012, so oh, it's you not really my Canada first too. time. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. But your your study visa went on. There was no problem. Exactly. You got it. Wow. Yes. This your story is too smooth, though. <laughs> it's too smooth. I'm sure somebody that is watching will be like, ah, ah. Is it that? Wait, wait. Is it that bankers they don't usually have any problem? Ah, yeah. I'm no, but you. but <laughs> if you if you remember, um. Right, really. During the during the training, during the training, I was always asking some questions, and you would say, "Why don't you just humble yourself?" And I really had to listen to you then, because you would say, "Humble yourself and listen," you know. So I took a whole lot from that. I, I <laughs> it ended up paying. Oh my god! <laughs> it ended up paying the dividends because I was. I remember you told me that I should just humble myself and listen to you. So I said, "Okay, fine. Let me listen." And 
I really thank God I I listened to you and I didn't uh, you know it's all good. <laughs> you <Yeah>. killed me. <laughs> oh my God. Sometimes uh, when, when I say this, this I don't keep record of them in my head. You know, and okay. sometimes people would say like, "Oh, you said this, oh, you said this." And I was like, <laughs> a friend of mine was just he said, uh, she said she was watching a video of mine and she was laughing. By the way, I couldn't recognize the video because it's not as if I planned what I was going to say in the video. As you're saying, I think somebody asked question, maybe somebody that wanted to relocate or something. I think yeah. what usually happens is that most times when somebody is telling me something, I look beyond what you are saying. I look beyond what you are saying to, to start asking myself, is like, what is making this person say what they are saying? You get yeah. like two people can ask me the same question and they'll get two different answers. And sometimes exactly. I may even jump the question you are saying to to attack the mind from where that question came from. Do, do you get what I mean? So I think maybe the person was not taking a step and they were asking, hey, what would this what will happen? Like they were just asking questions about the details. And I was like, Hey, from the way you're asking, you are, you have not started this admission. And from the way you are doing, even this year you will not start. Next year you will not start. So I was like, get started first. Instead of actually answering the question they asked, and so the person was telling me that he got a laugh. So when you said this, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I feel like hiding. Oh my god, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Let's advise maybe uh, men in banking. You know what you want for yourself. You know, everybody's story cannot be the same. You will all have different stories and different backgrounds. So you know, um, it's really for the person to decide. I mean, so if not... somebody comes to you now and say, "I want to relocate," I'm thinking of relocating. And let's say this is a coworker from Nigeria. Say, I'm thinking of relocating. Like, what what would you say to them? It's okay to do it. It's not okay to do it. It was a waste of my time. Don't try it. You know, like oh, no. It, it's it's not a waste of time it's not a waste of time you know there are different options if you if you want to relocate there are different options you have different pathways but i think education is one of it's one of the best really for me i also think that you know when somebody relocate directly most people that relocate directly they still end up going back to school i have a lot of people that will say okay i am i'm 35 years old i'm 40 years old i'm 45 you know they always kind of worry that age is a barrier. I always say that, okay, age is not a barrier because nobody is going to tell you don't go to school because they are 50. Don't go to, uh, you know, but did you find that, did you find any, uh, should I say, any obstacle because of age? I did not. And then remember, you know, in the CV, when you, you, told, you told us about this resume, how to prepare our resume, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you mentioned it as long as you're able to prove, you know, that you've, you've, you've been engaged somehow at every mm -hmm. point in your life. Yeah, mm -hmm. that should not be a, an issue really. Mm -hmm. So it's all about the way you equally um, process your, your resume, you know, that you sub submit as well as your SOP. So all those things can explain, can explain mm -hmm. all that. So I, yeah. I wouldn't say edition is a factor. It all depends on how you package your, you know, your um, application. So I have a question here that says, uh, how long did it take you to process your, I think the study process? I applied precisely on, in May. So by August, I had gotten my, my visa, yeah. Wow, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, was, it was soon after we concluded the training, I applied, and then I applied in May. By, by August, hmm. by August 1, I had gotten them a passport request. That's, that's yes. excellent. Somebody said, wow, I used to think uh, I am old and would not be considered. <laughs> so the person just uh, just making a comment. Thank you so much for taking our time to come and share with us. I really appreciate you. your presence here. I believe it will really, really encourage people, especially people that think that, oh, if they are not in their 20s, they cannot travel. That's, that's not true. Yeah, I really want to also advise that they should also listen, you know. Um, they should listen if they are going to go to take the training because well, a lot of things you said have been really instrumental. Like, for instance, you said if someone has gotten a master's program before, mm -hmm. you should go for something higher, you know? Mm -hmm. You cannot do a master's and then you want to go for a BSc program here. So all those things are part mm -hmm. of them, things that contribute to, you know, the con proper consideration of your application. So that's, mm -hmm. that's just it, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. How did advantage migration training help you specifically? Yeah, just like I said, it, I got a lot of... Um, 
a lot of insights on what I should do at each particular stage of the application mm. process. Yeah. This is excellent. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your comment. Okay. Thank you. Dr. And uh, Thank you. somebody said, what country are you in? Canada. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know, but since the person asked, maybe we didn't get to, you know, uh, mention it at the beginning. So thank you so much. Wishing you the best in Canada as you have arrived, that many more open doors, you know, and, you know, few weeks, so few months from now, few years from now, you will look back to this decision and say, oh, when I made this decision, I thought it was a good decision. But now, I think it's an excellent decision, you know, because even things beyond your, you know, why those dreams would have come mm -hmm. true for you, okay? Wishing yes, you the you. best. Sorry. Thank you very much. Okay. Take care, yes. Andrew. Take yes. care. Yes. Yeah. Thank so, you so much, everyone, so, for yeah. watching us. I uh, hope you learned from the interview. From the time he started his training, to the time they asked him to bring his passport for visa was eight to nine months. Within these eight to nine months, it's like, you do training, you do school application you wait for the application uh application comes you do visa application you know so it's like it's not eight to nine months of waiting it's eight to nine months of doing the step-by-step -step process it's good to plan with eight to twelve months or we'll say six to twelve months because even if you can finish earlier it's better to start early and finish early than to start late and you run out of time and you have to wait for another year or start deferring your admission. My name is Dr. Linda Iheme. I'm an educational consultant with Vantage Migration. Myself and my team, we train graduates. And when we say graduates, don't mistake, uh, don't, don't make the mistake of thinking we mean somebody who just finished school yesterday or who just finished BSc yesterday. No. We mean whether you're 100 years old or 25 years old, for us to work with you, you should have gone to at least uh, a university or, uh, and you have minimum of bachelor's or minimum of HND. Many people that work with us, they are also uh, people that have master's and they are going for PhD, right? So in fact, recently we also had someone who, who applied for PhD with BSc in the US and she got it. Right, I posted some of those things on my Instagram handle at Dr. Linda Iheme, which is a verified page. So the whole point is, if you're a graduate, we work with you. If you want to relocate via the study abroad route, we show you how to get admission, how to get the right admission, hello, <laughs> how to get scholarship, and there are different types of scholarship, how to get study loan if you need it right? And every other thing in between to, to allow you to successfully relocate abroad all by yourself. So, I encourage you, if you are looking at how to get started, start from our free webinar at uh, www.vantagemigration.ca www.vantagemigration.ca I hope I hope you've learned from this, uh, all, all that you had to say during this interview. Take good care of yourself till I see you again.